picked up. Oh no, he's in it straight to the man there. Badri, you can't keep him out of the game. Ball gone. There's another you just said he's not picking it. Dan Moore Roberts and welcome to the latest edition of the Windies Insider where we take you through the news, stories, players and the personalities inside West Indies cricket and we're coming to you from right here at the beautiful CCG Stadium in Antigua. Joined once again by Cricket West Indies, Dominic Warren, as we take you through the latest of what's coming up in this Windies Insider. Hey Dom, right. good to see you Denmore. Yeah, we've got a jam-packed show, so let's get straight on with it. First up, we've got a review of the Windies women against the South African team recently, and then we're off to India to see Nazira and hear everything about that's happened in India. And then we look at some of the very big moments of the Super 50 Cup that's going on right now in the Caribbean and we're going to continue our countdown to that very big ICC Women's World T20. All that coming up and more on this edition of the Windies Insider. So let's open the batting and go over to Nazira as she takes us through the international T20 series between the Windies and South Africa. I'm Nazira Mohammed, and here's the news on the Windies Insider. Well, the Windies women played a five-match Sandals International T20 series between themselves and South Africa. One game in Barbados, four games in Trinidad. Kensington Oval hosted the first T20 International where the Windies women took a 1-0 lead in a tight opening match. Natasha McLean was top scorer with 38 runs, which earned her the player of the match award. In addition to some quick runs from Marissa Aguilera and Kaisia Knight at the end of the innings. As the Windies women set a reachable target of 124 for 6 in their 20 overs. <laughs> Tidy bowling from spinners Afi Fletcher, who took 2 for 17 from her 4 overs, and skipper Stefani Taylor, who took 3 for 16, restricted South Africa's batters to 107 for 7, ensuring a 17 run Windies victory. The teams moved to the Brian Lara Cricket Academy in Trinidad for the remaining 4 matches. The second match saw the Windies women took a 2 0 lead with a dominant display. South Africa batted first and struggled to 101 for 8 with some great bowling from the Windies bowling attack. Anissa Mohammed's final over saw fireworks with four wickets falling in that over. Her second ball of the over took the wicket of South Africa's captain before taking her first ever hat-trick with the final three balls of the match ending with bowling figures of five wickets for 24 runs. An unbroken partnership of 72 from Natasha McLean and captain Stefani Taylor 
saw the Windies win by 9 wickets with nearly 5 overs to spare. Anissa's play of the match heroics were extra special for other reasons. Not only was it her first hat-trick, but it was the first Windies women hat-trick in T20 internationals. And it was also the first time her grandfather saw her play international cricket. I'm sure it was a woman that he wouldn't forget. The third T20 international was washed out and in the fourth match, the tables were turned when South Africa won by eight wickets. Despite Natasha McLean's 57 not out and a quick fire 28 from Deandra Dotton in 15 balls, South Africa got a fast start and won the game comfortably. So, on to the last game. We batted first and Haley Matthews smashed an excellent 70 runs for us to reach 155 for five at our highest total of the series. Despite Shamila Connell's good form in the series, she picked up 2 for 20. But South Africa went after our spinners and won the match to level the series with just one ball to spare. Our Windies women were naturally disappointed to tie the series from such a strong position. But they returned to their training camp to finish preparations to defend their Women's World T20 title. Hey, thanks Nazira. But we don't want to forget that fantastic story about Anissa getting a hat-trick, four wickets in the match, and her grandpa being there to see her perform for the very first time. I think that's just the great stuff in sport, isn't it? When your family's there, and in fact her grandpa hasn't seen her, and on home soil in Trinidad. But uh, you can also catch up with Anissa's profile. Just go onto the windyscricket.com website or the YouTube page and see a little bit more about Anissa. And in the meantime, let's go back to Nazira for a bit more on the men in India. Welcome back to India. So by now, you're probably aware that the West Indies men lost the two-match test series against the world's number one test side. After losing the toss in the first test, India's batting prodigy Prithvi Shaw with 124 punished the Windies bowlers. One of three centuries in India's innings saw him become the youngest Indian to hit a century on debut. The Windies were never in the game despite some resistance from Kieran Powell with 83 in the second innings. We batted first in the second test in Hyderabad. Many of the players dug in against the great bowling from India's Umesh and Kuldeep Yadav. Rostan Chase scored his fourth test century and his very first in India. Scoring 106 runs in a stand of 104 with skipper Jason Holder who returned from ankle injury. The West Indies reduced India to 160 for four before a century partnership from Richard Pant and Ajinkya Rahane frustrated the Windies bowlers. Some brilliant pace bowling, however, from skipper Jason Holder and Shannon Gabriel on the third day took six wickets in just 25 overs to restrict India to 367. But our batting woes continued against both pace and spin. With the chance to set a challenging target, we slumped to 127 all out and India knocked off the runs easily. As you can tell, India is a tough place to come and the players are disappointed with their batting performances. But in the next episode of the Windies Insider, we look at the shorter formats of the games, five ODIs and three T20s right here in India. Until next time, I'm Nasira Mohammed with the Windies Insider News. Another back show, Dominic. Another back show, sorry, I lost it. <laughs> hey, thanks again, Nazira. Before we move on, I know that the India series has been very frustrating and very disappointing for us, but we can't forget that Jason Holder put on a brilliant achievement as captain this year. This is his third consecutive five wicket hauls, and he's had what four for the season, already. and it's caused him to have what 33 wickets already in the in the year. What a really good performance for him! And his average is only is just under 12, 11.87. Really brilliant stuff from him. Fantastic. I mean, just have a look at this. So you're about to see a bit of footage in terms of Jason. You can see the passion and celebrations. And this performance means he's better than Shaab Akhtar, Ian Botham, Richard Hadley, Imran Khan. Glenn McGrath, the list of greats goes on, and our man is right at the top of it. Best performance in a whole century. Wow, fantastic. Fantastic. And the Jamaica Scorpions, they were led by the universe boss, Chris Gale, and what a way to end his career with the Jamaica Scorpions, 122 runs, he took a wicket and two slip catches. 
Well done, Universe boss. You're going to be missed. Yeah, well, he was only ever going to sign off in style, wasn't he? Well, that was Chris Gale this morning. Got put down, but after that, did not put a foot wrong. Every now and then, the ball went sailing out of the ground. Eight sixes he hit. And uh, no one was part of that. Fantastic century. And it's probably not the last time you'll see him in Jamaica colours. He said he wants to play at Sabina Park one more time in the whites of Jamaica. So we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, to catch up on all the Super 50, don't forget you can see all of the highlights and any of the stream matches live on the Windy's Cricket YouTube page. Everything you need to see is right there. So go and enjoy. Hey, so just a few days to go until the ICC Women's World T20 takes off with the Windies preparing right here at the CCG Stadium. Hey, the players can't wait for this exciting tournament to start and we're all the way behind them. And remember, you should be behind them as well. So go grab those tickets from the ticket booths in Guyana, St. Lucia and right here in Antigua. And the finals set to take place just a few miles away at the Reveal Richards Cricket Grounds. That's right, and the ladies have just finished training here today, so we've got a couple of the team. I wouldn't say fresh off the training pitch, probably pretty tired off the training pitch, just about to join us. <laughs> At that point in time, I remember um, running to my mom. She was the first person I, I ran to, and uh, I was really confident and happy and pleased with myself because I knew that I, I really tried hard in order to make the squad. Um, even coming over from my national team because I had the, that was my first struggle because from the national team is where they saw me and I got selected to train with the squad in order to make the first team in 2008 and it was a great experience. Reliving that moment uh, as a cricketer is something that I've always thanked God for because I know a lot of cricketers have played the game for so long but never reached that milestone and I'm happy to be on that team in 2016 when we lift that trophy. It was uh, quite an experience. Um, the team was not up to standard at the start of it. We had a lot of inside issues and uh, the most important thing we had one goal and that was to bring home the trophy and uh, I think that is what made it so so much more enjoyable because I remember getting into the dressing room that's before a practice match against pra Pakistan and uh, we just trashed out everything and we said listen we just going out there and representing the Caribbean people we're forgetting everything that has happened and we're just moving in faith and that was our motto for that for that tournament, uh, moving in faith. The atmosphere, it's always good to play cricket in India, I must say, really great atmosphere. And uh, we enjoyed every moment of it. It was more fun than a final. I think we had a lot of fun. And uh, I remember when, the, when Australia scored that 140 and we came out and I told the girls, I said they are 10 runs short and Haley and I was captain Stephanie Taylor she went out there and they just did it they brought it home we were jumping the guys came on the field I remember Tyron Sami running on the field you know it was just a proud moment that's right sign on to the website the ICC ticket website you got all the information there by the time you've got there there's loads of information about entertainment Brilliant music artists are going to be there as well. So get behind the ladies, get behind the cricket, have a brilliant time, and let's make the Caribbean shine for the whole world to see. Hey, so another pack show, Dominic. That's right, it's been good, hasn't it? Yes, it has been, and we hope that you've enjoyed it. And please send us your feedback on social media and on YouTube. And of course, tell us what you want to see. Do join us again next time for another edition of The Windies Insider.